Hey guys, it's Sarah and welcome to Books for Tea. First of all, I'm sorry if the lighting in this video is kind of bad. I'm filming this pretty late at night so I have to turn on my lights in my room and I might look a little bit yellow and I'm sorry about that but I just really wanted to film another video and I finally have some time right now. I want to apologize for only putting up so few videos during the last month. I think I put up like a wrap up a TBR and a little readathon wrap up and now I'm gonna do my whole uh, May wrap up but like I just <sighs> life and university are crazy at the moment and like I had this cool idea at the beginning of the year to do like two videos a week but I just wanted to let you all know that I will not be doing this for the next like two to three months maybe a little bit longer because I just don't have the time right now. I find it super hard to make time for reading or videos or taking books or gram pictures. It's all just a big mess at the moment. I don't have a good schedule on any of these things. I hope you understand and I just wanted to let you know not to expect regular content at the moment. I'm trying to get back into the swing of things. I mean, this is all a hobby. I don't want to stress myself too much about it. So I hope you all understand basically just wanted to inform you that I won't be posting as regularly. Anyway, I want to get into the books that I read in May right now. I did not at all meet my TBR and most of the books that were on my May TBR are now my June TBR. So that's all right though. Um, I will just tell you about the books that I did manage to read. The first one is actually one that I read in April but totally forgot to mention in my April reading wrap up for whatever reason and that is A Feminist Manifesto in 15 Suggestions by Chiamanda Nagozi Adichie and I have to say that I really really like this book. I got this from Penguin so I'm su still super super happy that they sent this to me and I really really like this book. It's basically, it's basically a letter that Chiamanda wrote to a friend of hers who asked her how do I raise my daughter to be a feminist? It's super super interesting, I really really liked it. I think I gave it 5 out of 5 stars or maybe 4.5 um, but I definitely gave it a very high rating. I really really enjoyed it and I can't wait to read more of her books because she is such an inspiration. Then the first book that I did actually finish in May was Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. I really really enjoyed the books that I have read by Rainbow Rowell so far and Carry On was no exception to that. Um, I really really liked it. It is a fantasy book that is kind of a Harry Potter parody kind of thing inspired by Simon Snow who is the Harry Potter-esque hero in the fangirl world and I really really liked this book. It was super cute because it also talks about the love story between Simon Snow and Beth. So there is a male male love story in this book that I really really liked. The only thing that I did not like at all was that we kind of had bisexual erasure in this and that's just <laughs> makes me so sad because if that wasn't in there I would love this book so much more but we have a character that obviously seems to be bisexual but it's never mentioned or discussed in here and there was just this really great opportunity to actually have a visible out by character and Rainbow just didn't meet that opportunity which I'm still so so sad about but other than that I did really like this book and I decided to rate it 4 out of 5 stars I think. I would recommend it and I had a lot of fun reading this. The next book was our Kindred Readers Book Club Book of the Month and it is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. In own words this book all about the Black Lives Matter movement which was so so good to read. We basically follow Star who is a teenage girl of color who goes to a school where there's almost only white people and she kind of has to balance her life of living in this predominantly black neighborhood where there's lots of where there's lots of gang violence and really poor people um, versus this pretty high posh life at this um, white private school that she goes to and she also has a white boyfriend and struggles a lot with that because her father is also really against that relationship and then there's the main plot which is that her childhood best friend was unarmed but got shot by a police officer 
and Star was the only witness at the shooting and she has to decide whether she wants to speak out for her friend and get public about it um, even though it's a really really hard situation for her. Um, I learned a lot in this book about people of color in America, about what it's like for black girls out there and I'm just so happy that this book got so much hype and was one of the biggest titles of this year in YA. Definitely deserved that place. I am so glad that I read this. I learned a lot. I absolutely want everyone to read this because I honestly think that it was so well done, so well written, such a great story that was conveyed in this. This is just such a relevant story, it's just something that happens all the time in the US. It's so important to talk about it, I think that everyone should read this and I think I rated it 4.5 out of 5 stars and really really enjoyed it. So the next book I read was one that really really made me think and I thought was such a great and important read once again and that is The Bone Sparrow by Senna Freudian. This is the German version. I think it was originally published in Australia because the story is also set in Australia and it is about Subi who is a little refugee boy. I think he's around 10 and he was born in a refugee camp. Um, he is the first boy who was born in there, but he has never seen anything from outside the camp. He has always only lived in there. Um, the people in this camp, the refugees who came to Australia and hope for a better life, are kept like prisoners under absolutely inhuman standards. They are treated in the worst way possible. There are guards who are totally abusing their power and you see everything through the eyes of this little child. And then there's this girl called Jimmy who finds a way into the camp and starts talking to Suri and who reads an old book that she has from her dead mother. He reads it to her and they bound over that. And we basically just follow the life of these refugees in this camp and it fucking broke my heart to see that people are actually treated like this and I just I just really really got super sad and I'm so glad that this book was written because I think that it's so 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 important that we bring awareness to the fact of how we as a society are treating refugees what we as a world are doing to the people who need to leave their country um, because they can't live there anymore and especially with the um, current theme in politics where everyone is just trying to build walls around their countries and to keep everyone out and where we are destroying the environment in a way that will probably generate thousands of refugees over the next couple of years and we need to start thinking now what will we do if their people if those people's homes and countries get flooded completely because we are keeping because we keep raising um, carbon emissions so much that the whole entire seas are gonna raise to levels where whole countries are gonna be underwater and thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people are gonna lose their homes and they're gonna become new refugees that the rest of the world needs to care for and it's just absolutely blowing my mind. I don't know how this world, how we as a society are ever gonna manage it and I have to admit that this book made me pretty sad and helpless at times but I think that it's one of the most important books I have ever read. I read it at five stars and I just want to I just want everyone to read it. It is such an underhyped book and I absolutely love reading it. So this will probably be on my favorites list of the year and you should definitely check it out. It's such an important book to read. The next book I read was another really informational one. I feel like you can kind of feel a trend here. Um, but that was Unterweisen by Mohamed Amjahid. It is a book about being a person of color in Germany. It's about what it's like to be privileged. So he basically talks about his experience as a North African guy in Germany, always being a visible immigrant, facing discrimination in all kinds of ways. Um, it was so heartbreaking but also so interesting and the main 
aim of this book was to show white people their privilege and it definitely happened to me and I wish that every white person would read this and understand what it's like to not be white in Germany because it honestly opened my eyes to so many things that I never considered. I live in a... I come from a town where we basically don't have any people of color living here and um, I'm just... Don't, I'm just not as aware of a lot of things as I would like to be and this book really really helped me and yeah I could definitely recommend this to everyone who is uh, white and to everyone who is German because it's really really good and really really important and I really liked it and I think I rated it 4.5 or 5 stars as well because I read such great and good and important books this month that I read it, that I gave high ratings to actually most of them. <laughs> and then the last book I read was one that was not on my TBR at all, but a friend of mine lent it to me because our German professor kept getting on about this book and it's kind of a must read for any uh, German literature interested person as myself. It is a very big bestseller in German young adult literature, so I decided to read it and it is called Chick. I will put the cover here. Or I think that it was actually translated into English and there it's called Why We Took the Car. So maybe you've heard of it. But this is about Mike who is a teenager. Um, I think he's around 14 and one summer he is alone at his home. Um, his mother is at a rehab for alcohol abuse and his father is out with his new lover and he has the whole big house to himself. And then this guy who is in his class but they never really talked, he's called Chick, he's Russian and um, he's kind of an outsider just like Mike and together they decide to go on a road trip. Chick kind of tries to convince him to step out of his comfort zone and do something really crazy for a change. So they leave without any phones or anything in a car that Chick has stolen illegally, driving even though he's only 15 or 14 and doesn't have a license. And they drive out to basically the middle of nowhere and have an adventure there. This book is pretty interesting. It does have a lot of discriminating and offensive language, but you also kind of see that it's just the way that this 14 year old boy would think and he kind of comes to realize that a lot of his stereotypes and um, offensive thinking isn't right. I mean, he's still kind of offensive even in the end, but um, I didn't think that it was done in a very bad way or that the author intended to be racist or homophobic or whatever. I think you just really saw this inside of this 14 year old boy and I thought that it was pretty interesting. Um, this book also has LGBT characters, which I thought was pretty cool, but overall I didn't really connect to the story. I didn't love it. Um, I just thought it was an okay book. I would definitely recommend you read any of the other books that I talked about before. And overall I rated Chick 3 out of 5 stars. So that was it for my reading wrap up. Let me know if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them. I would be super interested. Um, to know and if you want to pick up any of these books now that I've talked about them definitely let me know because that would be so cool. As you heard I read a lot of really really good books this month even though I didn't meet my TBR I'm still very happy with my reading month. Um, I hope that June will be a good reading month where I get through most of the books that I really want to read. I think I have like five or six books on my TBR which is pretty ambitious because I'm gonna be super busy which is also why I don't know when I'm gonna be able to film more videos but I hope you will be patient with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely leave a comment if you did. I will hopefully see you again in another video very soon. Thanks so much for watching and goodbye!